Welcome to Smart Remarks, where the tar sands are just fine because Al Gore is fat. So mile-long freight trains have begun snaking their way through Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, laden with uh, heavy crude oil from Canada's tar sands headed for refineries in Delaware. The trains aren't really causing motorists any problem. In fact, you might say they're doing motorists a favor because they're lugging the heavy, filthy oil down to the refineries to be refined into, among other things, gasoline. Yippee! Happy day! Except for the fact that Canada's tar sands are among the most environmentally damaging types of oil to be extracted on the planet. The heavy crude is mixed with sand and clay. Uh, it's dug out of the Canadian forest. It's going to ruin an area the size of Florida. It requires huge amounts of energy and water uh, to process, creates huge amounts of uh, uh, air and water pollution. Uh, and the greenhouse gas emissions are three times what's normally emitted during oil production. This is the same stuff that would be transmitted via the controversial Keystone XL pipeline. NASA scientist James Hansen has said that if all the Canadian oil sands are exploited, it will be, quote, game over for the planet. And of course, your typical response to this is, huh, what, so, don't care, don't you drive a car, hypocrite, outrage! But let's step back from this precipice, precipice for a moment and think for once. How desperate are we as a species that we're willing to risk environmental catastrophe on at least a local level, if not a global level, in order to get at this stuff, okay? We're heroin addicts, all right? We, our entire way of life is based around this drug, oil, and, and we have to have more and more of it all the time, and we don't really think about what the consequences of that might be. We need our fix, and we're willing to do almost anything for it. Just as a drug addict might turn to crime or prostitution, so are we clawing at the tar sands. Even an animal knows that you don't crap where you eat, but, uh, you know, we've created this entire denial industry which tries to convince us that, well, we're not really crapping where we eat. No, it'll all be fine. The tar sands will be fine because Climate Gate proves that Al Gore is wrong. None of this will have any negative effect whatsoever. Because if you can't trust the fossil fuel industry, which stands to profit handsomely off all this, I ask you, who can you trust? So this is the exploitation mentality. You know, you come across a windfall, you consume it all as soon as possible, and you look around for more, never thinking what the ultimate consequences of that might be. I'd like to think about the argument that might have raged on uh, Easter Island as they were about to cut down the last tree when you would have had the likes of people like me saying, uh, maybe we ought to think about this, and everyone else saying, no, no, trees are prosperity. You know, we need these. Don't be chicken little. Why do you hate freedom? But here, as there, just because we have a lot of sunken costs in the status quo does not mean the status quo is sustainable. Just because we need oil doesn't mean that we can always get oil without escalating costs. A wise society would realize this, but of course, we're not a wise society. So as we get more and more desperate to maintain the status quo, we'll grasp at more and more environmentally damaging straws, all the while denying that they are environmentally damaging, uh, all the while insisting that the science is somehow unsound, or even if it is sound, not to worry, because we have faith that God and Exxon and BP will provide. Well, they may provide. The question is whether we're able to handle what they do provide. <laughs>